the last class we were uh, trying to understand about data types so the first few data types which is very easy to understand is string integer float and bool it's basically like a four basic data types we have but as in then i'm assigning to a uh, certain variables so like uh, a equal to data vision b equal to 4 3 equal to 3.5 all this it actually gets data type by itself that's the beauty of dynamic programming right and after you do that in the yesterday session we also checked about how to access the elements of a string like if you want to access the first character second character we always start with the indexing i keep saying this your python indexing starts with zero so you have to always start with zero and whenever you are accessing it the end element will not be considered so you should always be plus one right and we have seen uh, we have seen few of the examples like how to access right and we were able to get from uh, from to uh, from to two and uh, we are also able to see the step the default step is one like it jumps by one 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 and then it goes it goes multiple uh, stems right now all this we were able to see we were able to experiment okay now we were also having some functions that is applicable for string so you need not worry too much about uh, integer or float it's just a, a number without decimal one number with decimal we will not be doing much but what is really important to us is we will be working with advanced data types which is nothing but your list tuple and dictionary which is very 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 important okay so this is very very important let's see what is this advanced data types so i'll go here and uh, let me go back and create a new python file let me create a new python file and i'll go and paste it here and today is the fourth session today is ninth advanced data types okay now let's talk about few of the challenges few of the challenges okay what happens with the help of variables let's see what happens with the help of variables like what challenges we add when we are using variables we'll see if i use the variables for example a equal to vinay is name i'm storing in the a b equal to is actually 165 centimeters and c equal to is 78 kgs its weight and d equal to is from bangalore is from bangalore and i'm having e equal to his phone number his phone number okay now this is his phone number now if i go and run this i have assigned five values to five different variables and all this is vinay's information vinay's name vinay's phone number vinay's height vinay's weight vinay's location right now if i want to go and see the data type it's as easy as i can simply go and see type of a type of b type of c so it's basically it gives you the data type right uh, i'm not that much worried on data types now but what is the challenge i have is what is a challenge i have is if i want to go and print his location i will get like this if i want to go and print his phone number i have to go and have this okay now let me tell you what is the problem now let me tell you what is the problem now in this session we have 66 people today 66 students we have so it's basically 65 plus 1 so i am one and you people are all 65 people are there okay so in the 65 people for every student if i'm storing your name if i'm storing your name if i'm storing your uh, age or height or weight if i'm storing your location if i'm storing your phone number that means that means for one student one student i am making use of five variables right for one person for one student i am making use of five variables one two three four five so vinay's name 
Vinay's height, Vinay's weight, Vinay's location, Vinay's phone number. I'm actually using five variables. If I want to store, if I want to store all of your people's details, 65. Any mathematicians? How much? How many variables I need to? 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325. 325 variables now tell me can we do this can we do this is it preferable no why storing like so much variables <clears throat> and repetitive task for each variable like for each data we need to assign a variable and need to store again Yes. Now, in order to overcome that, okay, in order to overcome that, we will actually talk about advanced data types. So, when I say advanced data type, it is actually also helping us in variables. Okay, I'm not saying it is better than string or a list here. I'm focusing on a variables. Why you need to create six, uh, 325 variables? Not required, right? And that is where we will be talking about list, tuple, dictionary okay so we'll try to understand one this one by one now this is a actual uh information that i have stored about v9 correct now i don't want to use it as part of this five variables so what i'm going to do i'll just say v equal to i'll open one bracket and here i will add all the information about v9 v9 165 78 Bangalore and I will add his phone number now this is where I am storing all the details of, of Vinay in one variable right so you need not create one two three four five so if I create five by chance if I want to go and access it I have to access by a like this I have to access and I have to access B like this and I have to access C like this so all this becomes a bit of struggle for me all this becomes because struggle for me. So in order to overcome that, now what I'm doing, I'm just sending all the values in a, a big square bracket. Now if I go and enter, now this entire five values has been stored for one variable. And if I go and search V, I'll be getting all the details about V9. Why are you using five variables for V9? Just use one variable, V. Now, we will contain all the information about Vinay. Now, you may ask me, uh, if I give A, I can just dis display Vinay's name. If I, if I give E, I can display Vinay's location. But if you are entering V, you are getting all this information. How will you access certain elements? Well, we have already learned this. If you want to access the elements, we can always make use of indexing so if i want only a i mean if i want only vinay's name i should have access with a if i want vinay's weight i should have access with c but here i am assigning everything to v i'm assigning everything to v so if i put v i will get completely all the information but if i want only vinay's name if i give one Actually, I'm getting 165. If I put Vinay, uh, V of 2, I'll get 78. If I give V of 3, I'll get Bangalore. If I give V of 4, I'll get number. But as we know that here also the index starts from 0. So V of 0 will get Vinay. So rather than creating 5 variables, I've created a 1 variable in that I've stored 5 elements. And that is how I am moving into the next step. Why we need 325 variables? Why we need 325 variables? It's not required. Now I just need 65 variables. In 65 variables, each variable, I will go and store a specific information about you. And let's see what this is called. Let's see what this is called. So if I go and write type of A, I'll get string because this is a string value. If I go and give type of B, 
we will get integer. If I go and give type of E, I'll be getting it's actually a number. So it's an actual phone number. But if I go and give type of V and now it is showing as a list. Now it is showing as a list. Now the first advanced data type that we are going to learn will be list. And as usual, uh, this is my notes. I'll start listing out whatever we learn. And here, when I say list, list is actually collection of collections of elements. Collections of elements. You can store anything, but I'm storing a similar information. Vinay's name, I'm storing. Vinay's height, Vinay's weight, everything I'm storing. So rather than using five variables, I am making use of one variable in that one variable I'm storing a, a collection of elements is my first it's my first point now also I'll say list how do you uh, identify your lists are actually enclosed in square brackets your list are enclosed in the square bracket now let's store two information let's say Santosh information so this is Santosh information okay so let's say Let's say I store my name and let's say I store height or a weight and let's say I store my location and let's say I store my phone number. Okay. Now, this is one person. This is one person. Now, I need another person. A. Anand. Anand. 155 centimeter. 83 weight. And he's from Chennai. And his phone number is 1231231231. Okay. Now, I have totally three customer, three employees. Vinay, Santosh, Anand. With just three variables, if I write V, I'll get it. If I write A, I'll get it. If I write Yes, I'll get it. I was able to store group of elements. That is a collection of elements into one variable. Now, this is called list. This is called list. I mean, we call it as a data type, but ideally I'm solving my variables issue. If the same three information I should have created by using variables, I should have created 15 variables. Five variables for Santosh, five variables for Anand, five variables for Vinay. I should have created 15 variables, which is practically not possible because you may have n number of customers. For each customer, you cannot keep on creating variables, variables, variables. Now that's the problem that you have. So that is why I have preferred now list. Now what is list? List is collection of elements. It's a collection of elements. So how do you know it's a list? List basically will be enclosed in the square bracket. Okay, you, you go and refer any of the materials. They will tell you what is list, but they will never tell you why we are using list. The reason why we are losing, uh, using list is the re to reduce the burden of variables variable is actually i cannot keep five variables for this right i cannot keep five variables i cannot keep five variables right now that's the biggest problem that's the biggest problem so i can simply say that as a burden to variables we are using list as a burden to variables we are using list but as in then, right, uh, this naming convention is not good. This naming convention is not good. So what I will do, rather than giving Vinay, uh, V-S-E-A, I will give Vinay information. And this one I'll give Santosh information. I'll, I'll give a proper name, okay? Information. And this one I'll give a Anand. In, uh, this is actually a variable name only. Anand information. Now, if I go and write this Vinay Santosh and Anand. Now, if I want to execute, if I want to execute, I'll simply go and create a Vinay information. I'll be able to get. But sometimes I have to access a particular uh, value. For example, um, your um, client is asking, hey, can you get me Vinay's location? Can you give me Vinay's location? So what is location? Vinay's location is Bangalore. So it should be, it should be. Three position. Are you sure? Yes. So this is a indexing zero, one, 
2, 3, 4. So this is how you can access the uh, list with the help of indexing. Okay. So what I need, I need VNI's location. So it will be VNI's of 3. So I should be getting 0, 1, 2, 3. Now I want my name. Santosh info. Where is my name? My name is in the first position. So first position means don't go and give 1. 1 means it is giving you the height. It should be 0. So indexing starts with 0. Okay. Now all this is nothing but your accessing the list. Now, uh, just like your string, right? Just like your string, if I want to access the first three elements, who can say me? Vinay uh, info of uh, 0, 2, and 4. 0 to 2. Sorry, 3. So if you need the first three elements, we need to give uh, 0 to 3. 0, semicolon 3. 2 or 3? 3. 3. 3. 3 only, 3 only. 3. Are you sure? Yeah. Vinay. Height and 70 is 8 will come. <laughs> I will access Vinay 0 colon 2. So this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So totally I should get Vinay 165, 78. 0, 1, 2. If I do this, no. I am not getting the 78. Why I am not getting 78? Because uh, 2 will exclude it. Exclude, yep. So it should always, should be. Yeah, it Please. should always be start and the end position should be always plus 1. Mm -hmm. So if I want Vinay 0, if I want 65, 1, and if I want 78, 2, that means 2 plus 1 I need to give. Only then it will work. So make it 3. So that. Ta that the final number also will be included. That final number also will be included. Now, this is how you can create the a set of elements that is getting stored in a variable. Correct? So good, right? Why you should have go with 15 variables? I can simply do it with three variables with the help of a beautiful concept called list. Okay. Now, let's see what are the other features we can do. Okay, what are the other features we can do? Now, yes, I'm the show. Can I get the first three letters from Vinay from the list? Sorry? So, like, uh, from, from first three letters from the Vinay, like V, I, N. From uh, we are going list. step by step. Uh, so, please have okay. patience. Okay. We will okay. we'll go uh, one by one, okay? Uh, uh, there is a particular order that you need to learn. So I'm teaching in the same way because a lot of people in this batch who doesn't even know A, B, C, D in coding. So I'm going in everything in step by step. We will all see that in the later part. Okay. Now we have three variables. We have three variables. So in this variable, I have uh, Vinay. In this, I have Santosh and I have in Anand. Okay. So three variables I have and each variable is having five, five elements. So this is a... A, a name, uh, this is a height, weight, location, and phone number, right? Now, imagine uh, there is one person who actually uh, shifted the location. Okay, who actually shifted the location. Now, let's see how to update your list. So, this is a list now. Santosh information will give you the uh, complete information about Santosh, correct? Now, another thing uh, which I can do now, listen carefully. I will go and write Santosh info. If I go and access 1, I'll get 165. If I go and access 2, I'll get 170, uh, I mean, uh, 75. If I go and access 3, I'll get Bangalore, right? Now, imagine that I have shifted my location. Like, I have jumped to a different location, okay? Uh, the best place on this earth is Bangalore. Okay, people who are in Bangalore will know that 
how good is Bangalore, right? In terms of nightlife, in terms of food, in terms of the places, so beautiful, right? I can say that it's the best on this planet. But only one thing we don't like in Bangalore is only one thing traffic. we don't like Bangalore is traffic. 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 traffic, traffic, right? So traffic is worst. But other than Bangalore, I can give nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Okay. Now, next to Bangalore, my favorite place is actually it was Maldives. Actually, it was Maldives. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to update Santosh of three. Zero, one, two, three. So this uh, Bangalore, I'm going to up, update to Maldives. Imagine that I moved to Maldives now. Okay, my location has changed. Usually whenever you uh, uh, go to different cities, you change your address in your Amazon, right? Amazon delivery, right? So it's like, imagine that I have also shifted my location. So from Bangalore, I'm changing to Maldives. Okay. How many of you have been to Maldives? How many of you been to Maldives? No one? No. 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 Why? Is it so expensive? Awesome. Is it so expensive? No, we are poor. What is this? Mal to go to Maldives, you have to be rich, huh? Oh, yeah. Yes. What? <laughs> To go to Maldives, you have to be rich or what? And also not married yet. Not married yet. That's good we support Modiji. Support Modiji. See, <laughs> all Maldives issue came in the recent times. But uh, it's a, one of the uh, uh, best place, right? You will, you will have that peace of mind. You see a lot of celebrities, cricket players. Everyone is going there for peace of mind, right? So it's the best place you can visit once. Uh, there is one story which I want to tell you. Okay, I'll tell it in the later part. Uh, I'll tell you about a story in Maldives. Okay, now imagine in now I am updating Santosh of 3 equal to Maldives. Now if I go and give Santosh information, now if I go and give Santosh information, now you can see that Santosh 165, 75, Bangalore and number. Now it has changed to Santosh 165, 75, Bangalore has changed to Maldives. And it has added a phone number. I mean, same phone number. So what you're seeing is your lists are updatable. That means once you create it, you can always go and updated how do you update it you just need to update this means this is going to be zeroth position this is going to be first position this is going to be second position this is going to be third position so simply go and write santosh of third position equal to maldives so bangalore will change to maldives bangalore will change to maldives okay now i will go and write another features of a list very important very important so your list is nothing but is nothing but I will call it as mutable. So what is mutable? Mutable means it's a changeable. So once you declare it, you can always go it. Once you create it, you can always change it. So that's a feature of a list. So list is a collection of elements. It is enclosed in the square brackets and it is mutable. When I say mutable, it is always changeable. I changed from Maldives to a bit Bangalore to Maldives. Now imagine I want to change my, uh, let's say phone number. I want to, let's say, change my phone number. So I will go and access this phone number. How to access a phone number? So phone number comes with which index? Fourth position fourth position zero one two three four so it's four right uh so it should be four plus one correct correct no no indexing no. starts from zero indexing starts from zero and you are not actually displaying set of elements i'm displaying only this so only this means it has to be zero one two three Four. So let me give five. It will throw me an error. Index out of range. The index out of range means it is saying that I don't have the fifth element. That is, I don't have the fifth index. So if I go and access four, 
if I go and access four, I will be getting the phone number. I simply need to update means assign it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You simply assign it now automatically. This, if I run it now, you should be able to see the changes. This has been changed to this. This has been changed to this. Right now, this is the way you can always go and add the update the information. Right? This is so good. This is so good. I'm able to add the information. Now, uh, second use case, you are able to update it. I'm able to update Bangalore to Maldives and I'm able to update from this phone number to this number. So it's updation is possible. Imagine I have to add a new element. I have to add a new element. So what I'll do. So this is zero. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. So what I will do. Santosh info of four. If I do, it will come phone number five is there. I will add my profession called trainer. So I want to add a new element. So zero position, first position, second position, third position, fourth position. In the fifth position, I need to add another value this time. And this time I will go and say that it is going to be a trainer. It is going to be a trainer. So I want to add a professional to this information. Now, if I run this, will it work? No, it won't work. Let me see. If I run this index assignment in, I mean, list assignment index out of range. And please do remember that this is not the way to add new elements. This is not the way to add new elements. This are type of assignments is only for updations. This type of things that you can do is always updation. You can update it. Okay, if it is element is there in the fifth one, you can update it, but fifth one itself is not there. How can you go and assign a new trainer value? It will not accept your assignment will come only if there is an existing index, then you can go and update. Never expect that you can go and add a new elements. Okay, now it has raised me another question. That means can I say that your list is changeable only, but you cannot add a new elements. Can I come to a conclusion that list is changeable? That means you have the existing value. You can change it, but it is not possible to add a new value. Can I come to this conclusion? Well, before I come to the conclusion, I need to have a proof. I need to have a proof. So let's go and see. Is it really possible or not possible? Right? Let's see. It's really possible or not possible. So what I did, I know this is a list, right? I know this is a list, right? Type of, if I type this, it's a list. So yesterday what we have seen, you, you just type the list or you just type the variable and you press dot and you press tab for all the, uh, that if that for that particular data type, whatever the functionality is there, it will tell you. Now that's the beauty of Python. Someone would have already written some logics and kept it for you. If it is a string, you will be able to see all the string functions. If it is an integer, you will be able to see all the integer functions. Well, now it's my list. If I press dot and if I press that tab, I will be able to see all of the I'll be able to see all of the functions that is applicable to this list. Well, what I really need is the first function which I'll read. I will go and write append. I'll go and write append. In the append, I will go and write trainer. In the append, I'll go and write the trainer. Now, this was throwing an error because fifth element is not there. Okay, this was throwing error because fifth element is not there. But here, I was able to write append and then I was able to write trainer. Now, if I go and write this, well, that information is being added. So to add a new element in the list, it should be with the help of append. It should be with the help of append. With the append function, I am able to add a new information. Correct. Now, let's see. I will go and add another one. Okay, Santosh info append append and I'll add sun at Microsoft. Now I'll add an email ID. Now I'll add an email ID. Now if I add an email ID, 
if I add an email ID, so what will happen if I go and enter this and if I go and write this, so it will come as Santosh, height, weight, location, phone number, trainer and email ID. So every time I go and add an append, it is actually adding towards the end. Now this is how you can add the new elements into a list. Okay, so updation means I can simply go and assign it. Okay, I can simply go and assign it. If I want to update it, if I want to update it, I can simply go here and figure out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Fourth element I need to update 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 if I do and if I give 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1. So if I go and do this, it's a updation. It's an updation. But for inserting, you can insert only with respect to append. So append is the only option where you can insert the new elements. Okay. But uh, so far, so good. I added a trainer. I added a trainer. And I added a Microsoft email ID. Right. Now, the next question you people will ask is, can I insert into a specific location? Why are you inserting in the last? For sure, you people will ask this. Before you ask, let me tell you what is this? How is this possible? If I do an append, it is actually adding in the end. Okay, this trainer got added in the end. The Sun Microsoft also got added in the end. Now, if I want to add in a particular location, let's see what is the functions that is available. What is the functions that is available? Append is what I did. Then slowly I was coming here. Clear, copy, count, extend is there. Uh, index is there. Insert is there. Pop is there. Remove is there. Reverse is there. Sort is there. Well, somewhere, since I know English, since I'm comfortable in English, the actual meaning which is near to that is, I would say, insert. It's insert. So, that means I can insert the values. I can insert the values. Append is actually adding towards the end. But let's see what this insert can do. But if I simply go and add insert, and if I add, let's say, KSR, if I add it, now it will throw error. It will throw error. It is simply saying, insert expects expected two arguments that means they are expecting two arguments but you are sending only one now when you say insert you cannot simply send ksr you can give the position you can give the position now i have inserted ksr in the first position i have inserted ksr in the first position so what is my first position santosh is my zeroth position my first position was 165 which is nothing but my height now what will happen that will actually be shifted because in the first position i have inserted ksr in the first position i have inserted ksr so since i have inserted the ksr here now if you see here santosh is a first position zero position ksr is a first position so everything else will be shifted everything else will be shifted so if i put insert if I put insert, this is the zeroth position. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if someone comes and sits in this position called KSR, it becomes a zeroth position and everything will be shifted by one place. And that is what is happening. So now the phone number was fourth position, right? Now it will become fifth position. Now that is how you can add the value in between also just by giving the index. Just by giving the index, you can add it. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now let's try to do a few more things. Let's try to do a few more things. Okay. Now um, I'll take a simple list again. Okay. Let's say I'll take a simple list. LST equal to I'll take some numbers. Okay. I'll take some numbers. 1, comma, 4, comma, 3, comma, 2, comma, 5, comma, 7, comma, 8. Okay. Now, just observe carefully. This is a list. This is a list. Okay. 
So if you want, you can always see the type of L list. It is actually list. Now, uh, this is a zeroth element, first element, second element, third element, fourth element, fifth element, sixth element. Okay. If I write LST dot append of 99, can you tell me where will this 99 come? In the last at the oh, end. At the end. At the end. At the end. Very good. So one, four, three, two, five, seven, eight. Afterward, ninety-nine is there. Okay. Now let's see who will answer this. Let's see who will answer this. I want another number called one ninety-nine. I have to insert between the values. 3 and 2. Who can tell me how can I insert 199 into this gap? Third uh, position. Dot insert of LST dot insert and then 3. 3 comma whatever. 3 comma 199. 3 comma 199. Which function I need to use? Can I use append? Insert. 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 Three. Insert. Three. Insert. Three. 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 I would say that in this case, I wanted to insert in the first position, right? So first, this is zero position. This was first position. So first position I want to insert means I'll give one comma KSR. So automatically the KSR came and this becomes second position, third position. It, it shifted by one place. Similarly, if I have to insert between the three and two, where this three is, the three is done. So I have to insert at it, say, this position. I have to insert at this position. So it will be zero, one, two, three. So 3 comma 199. Now if I go and write less, I should be able to get this. Now this is what I can do with the help of insert. Okay. So this is what I can do with the help of insert. And by providing the a proper index value, you can insert it. Such a beautiful feature of list actually. You can update it. You can insert it. You can do whatever you want. Okay. Now let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. Now, I will go and write LST equal to some numbers I will give. Okay. Some numbers I will give. And that numbers 1 comma 4 comma 2 comma 3 7 comma 9 comma 8. Now, I have this uh, list. I have this list. Okay. Now, if I go and search this list, it's going to give in a order. I mean, order in the sense, the order of insertion. One, four, two is what I ordered it. Now, I want in a sorted order. I want in a sorted order. Now, if I go and click dot, uh, it is clearly understandable that there is a function called sort. There is a function called sort. So, if I sort it, it is going to give you the results. Now, if I go and give list automatically, 1, 4, 2, 3, 6, 9, 8 has been sorted into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, it is ordered in a sorted order. Now, uh, as I said, Python is an ocean. Python is an ocean, right? We cannot learn everything. Sometimes, you have to do a research. You have to start figuring it out how to implement it the first task for you to figure out is by default by default the list is ordering in ascending order what if i want to get in descending order i want you to research this if i write a sort function so one four two three six eight is there right this has been sorted onto the that list only if i go and re see that list it is actually ordered but it is actually ordered in the small to 
figure. So it's actually ordering in the ascending order. I want you to research and tell me how you can sort it in the descending order. Will you all do that research? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Now let's go with the another function. List is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right now I have another function called reverse. I have another function called reverse. So let's see what is this reverse. Now if I go and search this list, all the elements is being reversed. That's the beauty of the reverse function. Okay. So that's the beauty of the reverse function. So what does the reverse function do? It will actually reverse all the elements backside. Okay. From 1 to 9 it is there. So if I go and write a reverse, it is actually going from 9 to 1. Okay, so that is also possible. Now, another one. There is another one. There is another one, one called pop. So there is an, another function called pop. So there is another function called pop. I don't know what is this pop. So let me run it and check. So list.pop I have given. If it throws error, maybe I'll give a parameter. If I don't throw, it will should work. Now I will give. So it is actually giving you a result. So list of pop means actually it is giving you one element. But if I go and see the actual element, that means from the entire list, it is removing the last element. It's a opposite to append. Append means I can add the last element. But pop means it is removing the last element. It is removing the last element. Now if I want to remove two, if I want to remove two, you simply go and give LST of pop will also be removed. Now if I go and write list, so it will give you 98463, you will be able to see only five elements. So that means what is happening? What is happening? I am actually able to remove the last element. How do you remove the last element of the list? It's easy, very easy. It is using pop. It is very using pop. So you write pop, you can remove the last element. Okay. Now, uh, if that is the case, how to remove the my own value? I don't want to remove the last element. See, for insert also, I when I say append, it will come in the end. But if I say insert, I can insert in anywhere between. Similarly, while removing also, I don't want to remove in the end. End means it's like pop. But if I want to remove in between, if I want to remove in between, in that case, what I will do is list dot append we have tried insert we have tried pop we have tried remove we have tried uh, reverse we have tried sort we have tried and there is one thing called remove let's see remove let's see remove now i will go and run this but if i say remove it is actually throwing me error see for some functions it will throw error some functions will not throw error wherever it throws error it is clearly understandable that you have to give a parameter so what is that parameter? What is that argument? List dot remove takes exactly one argument. You are saying it as remove, but what do you want to remove? That you are not telling. That you are not telling, right? So whether will I remove it? I have to see now. Now here is a confusion now. Here is a confusion. I know I have to give some element here. Let's say I want to give six. I want to remove six. But the question is, will this remove the sixth element or will it, will it remove the sixth index? That's the question now. Right. See, is it going to remove the element or is it going to remove the sixth element? Correct. So uh, again, if this is confusing, let me show you in the whiteboard what is happening. What is happening? So I have to re I have to do a remove now. Right. So imagine that there is a string of uh, there is a set of elements. Let's say this is a memory allocation. We have one, three, five, six, four, two, one, nine. Right? So this is the elements. Now the index is actually zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I have to write one function called list dot remove of six. Now, only one simple question, is this number going to be removed or is this elements index is going to be removed? Which one is going to be removed is the question. 
okay that even i didn't re- even i don't remember even i don't remember and there is no need to remember this you can always get it to know with a trial and error method so what i will do first i will try to run this now if i run this remove.6 in case if it is an index it should throw me error index out of one agree because sixth element is not there sixth element is not there this is zeroth element first element second element third element fourth element so in case if this remove is actually removing on the index basis it should throw me error that index not available correct do you agree do you agree yes yes, yes. but if it is actually looking for an element 6 that means this will work this will work so let me go and execute this it did not throw me an error it did not throw me an error means that means this remove function is not removing based on the index it is removing based on the elements now let's go and try lst you will see that 6 has been removed so whichever you want to remove you need not give the index but you can give the you can give the value of the list mm-hmm. now this made me to think an another question that another question for you is i want you people to try this assume that the list 1 is 1,3,7,4,3,6,2,6,4,6 now i want you to try list dot remove of 6 and i have i want you to tell me what is the answer for this will you all tell yes yes okay. yes now let's move on to the next function let's move on to the next function so i have tried append i have tried uh, uh, i have tried i mean i have uh, tried insert i have tried pop i have tried remove i have tried reverse i have tried uh, sort almost everything we have done right now let's say there is another function called clear let's see what is that so today if i learn lst i am uh, uh, i am getting the list value but if i run lst dot clear if i write lst dot clear so now if i go and write it is simply cleaning up the list it is cleaning up the list so clear is everything has a same meaning right in normal english also clear is a clear so clear also done clear also done it's actually clearing now if you go and try to print lst it will not come because all the values has been cleaned up all the values has been cleaned up okay now let's see we have the next function uh, append is done clear is done uh, we have to try this copy and count we have to try this copy and count let's see what is that copy and count okay now let me create this list now let me this create this list now and i will go and search lst1 dot count lst1 dot count now i'll count it now as if i remember all the arguments no i didn't know what is this so i was thinking uh, list count exactly takes one argument so i started to give one it was giving me one it was if i give two it is giving me two if i give seven it is giving one so that means i got to know that it is counting the elements so how to check it i will go and count six my answer should be one it is actually counting the elements as simple as that right now all this are list that is why it is called mutable it can be changeable you can insert it you can insert it you can uh, update it you can remove it you can remove a particular value all this you can do that is where you can go with list see i have shown you i have shown you out of in, in the list right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 functions are there in the 11 functions one we have tried two we have tried three we have tried four we have tried 5 6 7 8 9 so only two functions we have not tried okay let's see what is this copy there's one thing called copy here copy so if i write a copy it is not showing anything it's showing the results but the way copy should work is lst2 if i do it right lst2 is not defined i have not defined a list at all 
I have not de defined a list at all. There is no list called LST2. But if I write LST2 equal to LST1 dot copy, LST1 dot copy, in that case, the entire elements what you add in list1 will go into the list2. Now you can see that list2, I need not create again. I can simply take a copy out of it. I can simply take a copy out of it. Now this is all you... your list functions. Sorry, what? Sir, can you copy the specific elements by using here? Copy. You can copy the uh, complete list. Okay. The copy command is will give you a complete list. But if you want to copy a certain elements, let's say this to this. Okay. What you can do? First, you can go and write LST1 of let's say 0 to 4. So, you're getting this element, right? You assign it to LST3. You need not use copy this time. Copy means it's actually will copy. But this time I want to assign a certain elements. You can do this. But copy will always copy the complete elements. That's the function of a copy. Okay, sir. Thank you. Now, this is all about list. This is all about list. Okay. Now, there are some issues in the list. That is, what if I will not allow you to change the values? I don't want to allow you the changing the value. See, if I keep asking you to update, you keep people will keep on be updating. I want another data type where I don't want you to change. That will be the next data type which we'll be learning is tuple. So today what we have learned is list. In the next class, what we will be learning will be tuple. Are we good? We'll complete first week. Let's go into the advanced topics from the next week. Any questions? Okay, if you don't have any questions, we'll wind up the sessions. So this completes your free sessions. People who get registered will be again meeting on Monday. You can do a research. You can go back and check all the other institutes. You can check the quality. You can check the syllabus and then you can take a decision, right? So from Monday, it will be a registered class. Only registered people will be able to attend and you will not be, uh, I mean, you'll not be share getting the link. Everyone has to attend from the KSR app itself. For more details, uh, reach out to our website. You have the contact number there. Reach out to our contact. Saturday, Sunday, take your time. Go back, see the recordings. Uh, Try to understand if you see only one thing which I would say is join only if you are at, uh, understanding it. Okay, or else don't waste your money. So just try to attend only for understanding for the last five days. If you have understood the same way, all the classes will be there. So if you're understanding, please join. Okay, else take a wise decision. And uh, I mean, wherever you learn, I would say prefer data engineering because that's going to be the future. Okay, so with all that, we'll stop here. We'll continue on Monday. Thank you.